My name is Sanjay Gupta, I'm a consultant cardiologist in York. Today I wanted to do a video on hypothyroidism and the effects of hypothyroidism on the heart. The first thing to say is hypothyroidism is characterized by a deficiency of the hormone thyroxine. It usually occurs in women between the ages of 40 and upwards. Uh, mainly 40 to 50, but a lot of postmenopausal women also develop it with time. It is 10 times more common in women than in men, but men also get it. It is estimated that 1 in 50 women have hypothyroidism and overt hypothyroidism. However, most thyroid experts, and I'm not a thyroid expert, would argue that it is a lot more common than we think and perhaps a lot more people have subclinical hypothyroidism where they still have the process of hypothyroidism going on but their blood tests just don't match the kind of limits that have been set for a definition of overt hypothyroidism. So a lot of people probably have the process going on but they haven't met the biochemical definitions of overt hypothyroidism. So it's a really common problem particularly in women. The most interesting thing is that it can come on very slowly and can, may often be missed by both the patient and their doctor because it tends to present with non-specific symptoms such as weight gain, tiredness, lethargy, reduction in appetite, depression, that kind of thing. As hypothyroidism is exceptionally common and because thyroxine plays a really important role in many heart functions, I thought it would be useful to do a video on the effects of hypothyroidism on the heart. The first thing to say is that although thyroxine is a very important hormone in the cardiovascular system and the deficiency of thyroxine can play havoc with the cardiovascular system, the symptoms, the cardiac symptoms caused by hypothyroidism don't tend to be very prominent and tend to be a little bit non-specific. So unless the hypothyroidism is really very severe. Otherwise, the symptoms can be nonspecific, but the deficiency of thyroxine can be playing, can be having an adverse effect on our cardiovascular system. Common cardiac symptoms that we can see in patients with hypothyroidism include a slow heart rate. So that's one of the common things, the heart rate goes slow, but it's usually manifest as a sinus bradycardia, meaning it's a normal rhythm, just a little bit slower. The second thing we can see is sometimes exertional breathlessness and effort intolerance. So people are not able, they'll just find that they're getting a little bit more breathless. They're not able to do as much without getting extremely tired. So that can be another thing that we can find. The third thing that we see often in hypothyroidism is a rise in the blood pressure. In particular, the both values, the top value, the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure go up but the diastolic blood pressure goes up much more than the systolic blood pressure. And I'll try and explain that as this video progresses. It is also worth noting that some patients with hypothyroidism may develop swelling of their legs. What is typical about this swelling is it tends to be non-pitting. So when you press the swelling, the finger or the thumb doesn't leave a massive indentation behind, but the legs are sort of uh, swollen and this is uh, seen. Another thing that you can sometimes see in patients with hypothyroidism to do with the heart is the development of fluid around the heart. So in hypothyroid patients and up to 25% of hypothyroid patients may develop a little bit of fluid which accumulates in the sac that the heart sits in called the pericardial sac and this fluid is termed a pericardial effusion. These effusions can grow quite big but usually they don't need to have to be manually drained out because as you treat the th hypothyroidism, the fluid gets less. So I'm going to try and explain to you why people with hypothyroidism get the slow heart rate, the high blood pressure, and some of the other things that you find in patients with hypothyroidism. The first thing to say is that the hormone thyroxine controls other enzymes which regulate, firstly, how fast our heart beats. Secondly, how strongly the heart contracts. Thirdly, thyroxine will also control how responsive our heart is to the hormone adrenaline. Another thing to know about thyroxine is thyroxine relaxes all our blood vessels. So it makes all our blood vessels relax. It does this by its own effects, but also controls the release of something called endothelial uh, 
derived relaxation factor, EDRF, again, which opens up our blood vessels. And all these processes can get affected if we are deficient in thyroxine. From a cardiac and circulatory perspective, the simplest way to think of this is that when we are deficient in thyroxine, everything slows down and everything gets a bit stiffer. What this means is that in hypothyroidism, the heart rate will slow down, the contraction of the heart becomes less effective, and our blood pressure goes up. The reason the blood pressure goes up is because of the stiffness in the blood vessels, okay? Because you're not, the thyroxine is not opening up the blood vessels, you're not getting this EDRF, so our blood vessels don't open up, and therefore the blood pressure, because the heart is having to pump against the stiffer system, the blood pressure will go up. The diastolic tends to go up a lot more, and because of that, the pulse pressure, which is the difference between the systolic and the diastolic, actually gets less. So we find that in hypothyroids. Although less blood is going around because the heart is beating less strongly, it's beating slower, and because of the stiffness, so there's less blood going around, but this doesn't really manifest as a major problem because the oxygen requirements get less because everything is slowed down, so all the tissues don't need as much oxygen. There was an interesting study where they took a bunch of people who had had their thyroid removed as a result of thyroid cancer and who were on thyroxine replacement, and actually when you deprive them of thyroxine replacement, their diastolic blood pressure, the lower value, went up in about 20 to 40 percent of patients. The average um, rise in blood pressure is around about six millimeters of mercury for the top value and about nine millimeters of mercury for the bottom value. As the heart slows down, patients with hypothyroidism may be more prone to developing ectopic beats, extra beats which come in. So these sound like this. So the gap is caused by an extra beat, but these extra beats are less effective in an already in less effective system, and so they feel like misbeats, but they are actually extra beats, and then the next beat comes in a lot later, and these are called ectopics. So again, we see more ectopics in patients with hypothyroidism because the heart is slowed down. It's also worth noting that another heart rhythm disturbance that can be seen in hypothyroidism is that when the heart slows down, our QT interval, will prolong. So people who already have problems with their QT interval, who have long QT syndrome, or people who are on lots of medications which prolong the QT, or people who have uh, underlying heart disease are more prone to developing further prolongation of the QT. And this can predispose them to a condition called torsades de points, which is a risky and dangerous heart rhythm disturbance. But this is in the minority of cases. It's also worth noting that sometimes patients with heart rhythm disturbances are given a medication called amiodrone. Amiodrone is called amiodrone because it contains iodine. That's why it says amiodine. And that iodine can affect the thyroid gland and make hypothyroidism worse. So that's another connection between uh, heart rhythm disturbances and the thyroid gland that sometimes the medications we get for heart rhythm disturbances can make the thyroid more dysfunctional. Patients with heart failure, patients who have already got pre-existing weak hearts, the development of hypothyroidism can make things worse because the heart is already not contracting as well. And then if you slow the heart down and make the contraction less effective, it can exacerbate the symptoms of heart failure. So that's another thing to be aware of. In patients who have angina, the presence of hypothyroidism actually helps because when you have angina, you have a supply-demand mismatch. You know, the, when the heart needs more blood, the supply gets less and therefore the patient complains of chest pain. In hypothyroidism, actually, angina tends to generally get better because the body's requirements go down. So the demand goes down, which means that the supply demand can be more equal. This is not to say that hypothyroidism is a safe condition, because what we do know is that the presence of hypothyroidism is quite inflammatory, and it can accelerate atheroma or heart artery narrowings over a period of time if it is left untreated. In particular, hypothyroid patients also develop problems with their cholesterol metabolism, and they get very high levels of LDL cholesterol, VLDL cholesterol, total cholesterol, and even triglycerides. Patients with hypothyroidism also get the blood pressure problem, which again exacerbates the risk of developing stiffening of the blood vessels in the coronary arteries, which leads to atheroma. 
And we also find that in patients with hypothyroidism, you can get elevated levels of homocysteine, which can also contribute. Hypothyroid patients often get edema, so they get the swelling of their legs because of fluid in their legs, but typically the edema doesn't tend to be pitting, uh, it's non-pitting, so the way you tell is you press on the swelling and if your hand leaves an indentation that tells you that's pitting, if it doesn't that's non-pitting. So typically hypothyroid patients tend to get non-pitting edema. Patients with proper heart failure, which is the other condition in which you get a lot of edema, tend to get pitting edema. The reason hypothyroid patients get uh, edema is largely because of accumulation of something called glycosaminoglycans. These glycosaminoglycans will absorb more fluid and uh, lead to accumulation of water in the feet. The main treatment of hypothyroidism is to correct the hypothyroidism, you know, so as you correct the hypothyroidism, most of the cardiovascular abnormalities that you see tend to normalize. The important thing, message here is firstly that it is important to be aware of hypothyroidism and to be aware that it can come on non, you know, with non-specific symptoms. So if you're in that kind of age group, you're noticing that you're getting a bit more tired, um, you're putting on weight, your appetite has gone down, you're depressed, that kind of thing, it's always a good idea to go and have a blood test to check your thyroid gland and make sure you're not hypothyroid. The second thing is if you do develop these things like you know high cholesterol, high blood pressure, etc., treat the thyroid. And as you treat the thyroid, these things will improve. Uh, I hope you found this useful. I would love to hear from you as to what you thought of this video. And once again, thank you for all that you do for me.